Hello, Namaskar, Namaskara, Namaskaram, Namaskar. My name is Pooja Devedi. Welcome to my class. In today's class, we will discuss the cabinet decisions that have been taken by the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs yesterday. There are so many decisions that we need to cover today that it will be a holistic coverage as well as very important from the perspective of your UPSC prelims 2024, from the perspective of your UPSC mains examination as well. So it is important to keep a tab upon those schemes and new initiatives that are taken in certain cabinet decisions. I'm here to solve all of your problems today. Let us begin with the roadmap. This is the roadmap that we are going to take. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has taken decisions with respect to farmers. What kind of initiatives need more outlay of rupees? What kind of initiatives should be for the betterment of the farmers? So PM Pranam scheme plus Gobardhan scheme. For the first time ever, sulfur urea has been okayed. This is urea gold. That means right now, only name coated urea was used, but now sulfur coated urea will be used for the first time ever. PM Kisan Samruddhi Kendras as well as sugarcane rates have been hiked. The fair and remunerative prices. National Research Foundation bill has been approved and CDRI as well. We will discuss all that in detail. Before I begin with the class, I would like to inform you about three courses we have launched, three as in, for different languages, Hindi, English and a hybrid batch, English. So, any one of you who are feeling that you must take the UPSC 2024 examination but do not have the proper strategy, join Study IQ through this initiative. The prelims to interview course makes sure that you are prepared for prelims, mains as well as the interviews, along with classes which are live in nature and started from the 19th of June onwards. These will also provide you study material, mains test series, prelims test series, daily answer writing practice, current affairs program on a daily basis along with the PDFs, and a mains residential program for those students who will qualify prelims 2024. You will be called to the Study IQ campus where you will prepare for the mains free of any distraction. I'm going to take up international affairs or international relations in these classes as in the English class. And for Hindi, English or English, you can use the code PDLIFE to get this class at a discount of 29,999 only. We are closing our batches tomorrow, that is 30th of June. So be quick, okay? Moving on. Now the news is that the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, which is an attached body of the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, has taken a decision on a slew of scheme. The total outlay of this particular scheme is more than 300,000 crore. A lot has been provided for the farmers. What is Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs? It is a committee which is headed by the Prime Minister, consisting of also the Minister of Defence, Home Affairs and Minister of Cooperation, Minister of Road, Transport and Highways, Finance, Minister of Corporate Affairs, Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, External Affairs, Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs and also Textiles, Education, Skill Development and Entrepreneurship because this is a policy making body that is why it is important to coordinate policies. It reviews the current economic trends and tries to endeavor along the policies so that the trends are upheld in India as well. It coordinates all the activities which is required for it at the policy level. It deals with the fixation of prices of agricultural produce and price of essential commodities. Why am I telling you all this? Because in prelims, this question could be asked. I have already covered this in my daily current affairs. So do watch it. Considers proposals for investment of more than rupees 1000 crore. I could trick you and say that it looks into the proposal of more than 500 crores, but no, it is 1000 crore. It also deals with industrial licensing policies. It reviews rural development as well as the public distribution system as well. So, this body has taken certain key decisions which could be asked in your UPSC prelims as well as mains paper. Urea subsidy scheme will continue. That means right now, what do we understand by subsidy? Subsidy is the plugging of the gap that is between the price at which one person buys anything 
and the price at which one person is supposed to sell anything. In very simple terms, I can bring in X and Y here. X is a farmer, Y is a person who is selling urea. Y has to sell it at the cost of 100 rupees. Why? Because it has put a lot of investment and for profit, it needs to sell this fertilizer or urea at 100 rupees. But X is a poor farmer and X wants to get it for 40 rupees. And this is the gap between these two. 60 rupees gap for urea. Now, the government wants to ensure that the interest of the farmer as well as the interest of the producer of urea who is selling it is maintained. So, what will the government do? Government will come up with a plan named as subsidy. So, the government will provide this amount of rupees to the producer. Okay. So, that the farmer can get it uh, and take, of course, by providing this particular amount, that means 60 rupees of subsidy is filled and that makes the government another person Z. Now, Z will sell it at a price of 40 rupees. So, this is how the government provides subsidy. And the more the subsidy the government provides, the more it will become a burden on the government treasury. So, this is what the government is trying to reduce right now. We will talk about that as well. So, the continuation of the subsidy scheme will be there. This much crore has been committed for the urea subsidy. Urea will be in a lot of demand because we are an economy. We need to secure our food security. That is why increasing the fertilizer subsidy is also the plan. By 2025-26, 8 nano urea plants with production capacity of 44 crore bottles equaling to this much of conventional urea will be commissioned. That means capacity has to be increased. Revival and setting up of 6 urea production units will take place in Kota, that is in Rajasthan, West Bengal. Telangana, Gorak, uh, in Telangana, in the Gorakhpur of UP, in Jharkhand and Bihar sector as well. Since 2018 it is being done, more capacity will be increased. Now, if you want to take up the PDF of this particular class, you can be a part of my telegram channel Pooja Devidi Stadiyaki UPSC. You can talk to me about UPSC or any other query on my Instagram channel. Okay, and we have the PM program for restoration awareness generation. Nourishment and Amelioration of Mother Earth, that is PM Pranam Scheme, which was launched during the budget of 2023 only. In this particular scheme, what does the government try to do? Chemical fertilizers are on the rise. Government has to give subsidy. Now, government is thinking, why not create another supply of organic and bio fertilizers so that dependence on chemical fertilizer is decreased? So, through the PM Pranam Scheme, the government is trying to do that, okay? And it will incentivize states and union territories which are spearheading this particular purpose because it is important to create awareness among the farmers that please use this particular fertilizer. Don't just depend on chemical fertilizer. So, burden from the government treasury will be reduced. It will also promote alternative fertilizer and the balanced use of chemical fertilizer. Of course, we cannot completely eliminate chemical fertilizer at this point of time. But we have to create a balance. That is why another nutrition is also being touted. As you see that India as an economy is increasing. Most of the fertilizer we need is for fertilizer and urea. We need is for food grains. Then after that we have oil seeds. After that we have cotton. So these many sectors they constitute the most number of fertilizer that is consumed. And you can see that there is a spike in chemical fertilizer requirement which is causing a lot of harm to the subsidy, subsidized prices because of that is given by the government and that is causing a problem for the government. Promotion of this particular pranam, uh, PM Pranam scheme aims at promoting alternate nutrients for agri-management. To encourage and balanced use, the balanced use of fertilizer, both chemical as well as organic. It focuses on reduced subsidies in states. As per the initiative, states will get 50% of that of the subsidy savings as a grant. Okay, It will be used on new technology. 70% of the grant will be used for technology and developing units at different village, block and district level so that organic fertilizers can be developed. 70% of the grant. And remaining 30% will be given as incentives 
to panchayats self help groups uh, those uh, basically groups which are creating awareness among farmers about the importance of using organic fertilizer although there is no separate budget allocation for this these will be financed through the savings of the existing fertilizer subsidy which are running under the which are various schemes running under the department of fertilizer next is there should be a market development assistance for promotion of organic fertilizer from gobardhan plants now gobardhan plants is under the gobardhan scheme which has been launched by the ministry of drinking water and sanitation a very important preliminary fact it stands for galvanizing organic bio agro resources dhan scheme that means you can earn money through organic waste the scheme is being implemented as a part of swachh bharat abhiyan of the gramin so this is a very important preliminary fact that i am giving here positively it aims to positively impact the village cleanliness first of all collecting that waste and generate energy from the cattle and organic waste that is why it is gobar dhan and also with that the people will find employability and also livelihood so this is gobar dhan scheme okay so a market development assistance to create uh, a market for gobar dhan it is important we provide assistance incentive mechanism for restoration nourishment and betterment of the mother earth of course all right it will facilitate in addressing the challenges of managing whatever crop residue is there also we see parali burning during the october to november period when wheat has to be grown but the residue crop is burned because i, I wouldn't blame the farmers as well here if they do not have a substitute for it what and where will they go it is very easy to judge oh my god these farmers are doing such a loss to the country yes they maybe they are aware some are not even aware of it and if you have made them aware we need a substitute for it as well but the substitutes which are available right now are very first of all they are expensive they cannot be affordable and they are not accessible as well so until and unless we provide accessibility to them affordability to them they will of course burn the parali or crop residue burning so of course from that perspective also as a future bureaucrat you have to think that all right so problems of parali burning will also get reduced it will also help in keeping the environment clean and an additional source for the farmers as well now the another important aspect of key decisions of the cabinet was sulfur coated urea or urea gold this will address the sulfur deficiency of soil right now we just knew about neem coated urea but to address the sulfur deficiency in soils among the country we will use uh, urea gold to save input cost of the farmers and raise income for farmers because crop productivity will increase after using urea gold now pradhan mantri krishi samruddhi kendras they touch 1 lakh as a unit and they provide a one stop solution for all needs of farmers this is also shown the benefits of these slivers a slew of schemes is many how it will help in the judicious use of chemical fertilizer sulfur coated urea is going to be used which will impact the health of the soil raise the income of the farmers do not the subsidy thing for chemical fertilizer if it is reduced of course the government's pain of providing so much subsidy will also decrease it will promote the concept of natural farming which is much healthier for the farmers as well as the consumers also it will be better utilization for the crops uh, crop residue and the waste and parali as well now sugarcane rates have been hiked the fair and remunerative prices which is announced by the cabinet committee on economic affairs it is recommended by cacp and this has been increased by 10 rupees now it will be rupees 315 per quintal for the 2023 24 season and these what is this fair and remunerative prices like we have msp for more than 20 plus crops mandated ones similarly we have fair and remunerative prices for sugarcane it's a threshold that is touched or set by the government at this threshold only the sugar mills will buy sugar from the farmers and that is why it gives security to the sugarcane growers i have covered this in detail in my daily current affairs go and watch that now next is importantly national research foundation bill what is this this is an apex body 
to provide high level strategic direction to scientific research in India in accordance with the national education policy of 2020. So basically this is a body which will spearhead research and development in scientific affairs. And it will, uh, of course, according to it, a body should be established to foster a culture of research and innovation according to the fundamental duties of the constitution. It will happen so in the entire country of India across various academies. The NRF's governing body, there are three important bodies we have to take care of whenever we are going to tackle the questions. Three important bodies could arise for NRF. Governing body, which is headed by the Prime Minister as the ex officio president. There are two ex officio vice presidents, the Minister of Science and Technology and the Minister of Education. This will also comprise of eminent researchers and policy makers. The national education policy mandated that a body as such should be developed. The estimated cost is of rupees 50,000 crore for the next five years, 2023 to 2028. The Department of Science and Technology will be the administrative department of NRF. Then we have the Executive Council. Executive Council will of course implement the policies. It is headed by the principal scientific advisory or advisor to the government. It will create a policy framework put in a regulatory process as well. To encourage collaboration and increased spending in research and development. Research and development should have a lot of spending then only we will move forward when it comes to science and technology. It also repealed it also repealed the Science and Engineering Research Board which was created in 2008 by the Parliament. Now it has been subsumed into NRF. Now the bill will become an act by its own process. Okay. Now another thing is the ratification of headquarters agreement with CDRI. What is this? CDRI is of course the Coalition for Disaster Resilience Infrastructure. For this we need a headquarter. So the headquarters agreement between the Government of India and CDRI should be signed, should be ratified, so that should be brought a legislation for, so that we can have a headquarter in New Delhi. This was already signed, but still not ratified. A legislation has not been brought. It was launched by Prime Minister Modi in 2019 in New York at the United Nations Climate Action Summit, so that a global partnership could be developed, so that we can be resilient against the disasters. And it aims to promote sustainable development as well. On 28th August 2019, the cabinet approved the setting up of CDRI with its supporting secretariat at New Delhi. It also approved the finances for 480 crore rupees and this will be for a period of 5 years, 2019-20 to 2023-24. So these were the important key decisions, alright. And on 29 June 2022, recognition happened for CDRI as a international organization as an international organization. Now signing of the headquarters agreement for CDRI, it will exempt immunities and privileges will be given as contemplated under section 3 of the UN Act of 1947. Since its launch, 31 countries and 6 international organizations, 2 private sectors have been a part of CDRI. Okay, so these were these some key decisions all which were covered in yesterday's uh, PIB resource. I have covered all for you. Now you do not need to worry about what you have missed when we talk about key decisions of CCEA as of now. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching.